In Ephesians 6, Paul calls us to take our stand in the place of spiritual warfare. And the second armor in the armor of God passage is the breastplate of righteousness. Of course, the breastplate is that piece of armor that covers all and protects all the vital organs from the thrusting through of the accusation of the evil one. Now, a lot of times when we think about a breastplate of righteousness, our mind immediately goes to the practice of righteousness. That is the outworking of godly behavior. And while that is true and there's accuracy to that, that statement, I want to propose that the breastplate of righteousness is actually far more systemic reality than merely our practice. Theologians talk about the two types of righteousness. There's the practical righteousness, the, the practice of righteousness, and then there's the imputed righteousness, the, the righteousness of Jesus that is shared with everyone who repents of their sin and believes on the name of Christ. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5 says, God made Christ who knew no sin to be sin for us so that through him we might become the righteousness of God. I'm convinced that the, the warfare armor of the breastplate of righteousness begins with an internal affirmation that we stand not before Father, not in our own righteous behavior, not in our own goodness, not in our own piety, but in the very righteousness of Jesus Christ. The imputed righteousness, the doctrine of the imputed righteousness creates a sense of humility and a fear of God in the heart of every believer because we know that we stand before the Father not in the basis of our own goodness, or our own good works, but on the good work of Jesus Christ. This is the, 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 the systemic reality um, of the, of the breastplate of righteousness. Indeed, all of our good behavior, all of our practice of righteousness flows from the truth that we have received Christ imputed righteousness. Now, this is easy to say, but it actually takes, it's a little bit more involved to walk this out. In fact, I find myself affirming this truth really on the regular because I know that the tendency of the human heart is to stray from the free gift of God. Um, that comes through faith in Christ Jesus and to stray from Christ's righteousness to a, a, a point of self-righteousness. In fact, the longer we, we practice good behavior and we're disconnected from the truth of Christ's imputed righteousness, we're almost guaranteed that we're going to fall into the trap of self-righteousness. And as a result, we have a critical mass of believers who really kind of take on two categories of manifestations of self-righteousness. You have kind of the aggressive category where self-righteousness is expressed in things like criticism of others, um, diminishment of others, uh, a type of spiritual elitism, or perhaps, perhaps even just living offended with others. You know, that's the aggressive form of self-righteousness. And then you have the passive form of self-righteousness that's kind of characterized by shame and the internal dialogue of self-condemnation, and, and the internal dialogue of insecurity and inferiority. You know, the reality is that whether it's the aggressive form or it's the passive form, both, both of these practices are really expressions of self-righteousness. In fact, when we are busy internally criticizing others, being living in offense with, towards others, or believing the lie of elitism, Really what we're doing is we are participating in Satan's accusation against other believers. Uh, in the same way, when we kind of live with the internal dialogue of shame and condemnation and insecurity, really what we're doing is we're practicing, we're participating in Satan's accusation of us. And I want to tell you something, you do not have authority over the evil one in spiritual warfare in areas where the uh, evil one has authority and influence in you. So then often when we talk about taking up the breastplate of righteousness, it begins with a practice of spiritual inventory. God, is there any self-righteousness in me? And then as we embrace the gift of repentance and walk out the truth of repentance, what happens is repentance realigns us to Christ's righteousness. And that alignment to Christ's righteousness aligns us to Christ's authority. Now we can take our stand in spiritual warfare. Today I want to challenge you and I want to exhort you to take up the breastplate of Christ's righteousness.